Uh, sorry, sister. I think I got six, seven hours pool time a week, and that's if I went to every single session. Obviously, had A levels, had yeah. a lockdown. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I couldn't, I couldn't swim at all. And then to come to Loughborough, the first four weeks, God, I was, I didn't talk to anyone. I was so miserable. I was, tired <laughs> or? Uh, yeah, tired. Like I couldn't, I could not yeah. get out of bed. I was napping like three or four hours a day. Luckily, I didn't have lectures at the start, and I was just, I was in the bin. Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host Scott and back with me yet again is my good friend Dan and after our fun podcast last week where we named our own Swimming World Cup football team, go back have a listen if you don't have a clue what I'm on about, this week we are talking swimming in the actual swimming pool and we are reviewing the short course bucks competition that just happened in Sheffield. Yeah, we do enjoy mixing up with a bit of fun that's a little outside the box from time to time. But back to it this week as we review Bucks that happened at Ponds Forge in Sheffield last weekend with the help of another guest who will be joining us later on in the episode. Yes, let's not reveal too much about that just yet unless you've, mm. I don't know, read the description or title of this <laughs> podcast. But anyway, the usual top university swimming clubs like Loughborough, Stirling, Bath were all on display at Sheffield but that isn't entirely what Bucks is all about is it Dan so there is the elite swimmers on show but there are also quite a lot of fun social swimmers and the atmosphere on poolside at Bucks is one of the best in the country me and Dan can both testify for that yeah definitely I'd, I'd love the fact that the atmosphere is so good because you get the I don't know if it's because there's less pressure I think we're going to ask some of these questions to our guests later on, but I don't know if there's less pressure with the the social aspect of things as well. And because Loughborough, Sterling, Bath are so far ahead that they can do their own sort of, you know, play around with their race tactics or something like that. Ah, Um, what you're trying to say is those guys are expected to win. Everyone else racing can have fun and actually enjoy the meet and take pressure off and not really worry too much about times. Yeah, well, that, this is what questions we're going to ask our guests later on, but uh, yeah. I, I reckon that's part of it, and I think that the social aspect is a, is a big key thing. It'd be great to see if this is all trickled down to other meets across the, mm. the year and open meets, and, you know, Arena League is probably the next closest thing to a B-U-S-L. big atmosphere, isn't it? Don't forget yeah, and that as well. Absolutely. So they're, they're onto something big, which we're worth keeping an eye on, of course. We're helping. So, um, yes, I think uh, Bucks is always one to look forward to, and... Uh, I, I can't wait to, to dig a dive into it, really. Let's let's go into a review mode. Yeah, so along with enjoyment aspect, there were several big names on show. So let's, let's touch upon their performances so everyone is aware. Hmm. What was Swam? Best swimmer for me, standout as always, every time he gets in the pool. Irish records broken, left, right, oh. and centre, Daniel Whiffin. Um, the future yeah. is still as bright as it has ever been. Three... Three weeks training at altitude seem to have done the job because 800, 1500 bucks records, Irish records, swimming very, very well. Yeah, everything he's doing is, is is absolutely bang on at the moment. Like you said, that altitude training has obviously paid dividends massively um, because Irish record in the 15. Yes, I know it's, it's short course, but even still, it's an Irish record. His name goes down in the history books, and every time he dives in, he's PBing. It's, mm. it's quite incredible. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does at um, future meets, especially in the summer with Worlds, uh, because he's onto something special right now. He really is. Mm. Let's stay on theme with distance swimming then. On the women's side, mm. Fleur Lewis and Leah Crisp. Really good performances. Yeah. Again, two bucks records. Distance swimming. Maybe there's a bit of hope for British distance swimming and we should put a little bit more positivity on it. Well, I'm going to cast our minds back to the Commonwealth Games where, you know, Team England didn't take any distance female swimmer and you think well hang on we've got two girls here who are looking pretty good breaking bucks records i know again short course but even still if you've given those girls the opportunity who knows how much experience they would have gained so it's it's horrible to look back in that sort of way but i think the future will be good for these girls if they keep on working and uh, keep working towards their their end goal 
Yeah, I'm going to say this now. I have no idea how swimmers swim a 1500 short course. Surely you just end up feeling all sorts of dizzy. Yeah, I don't know how you keep counts, because what is it, 64 lengths, 60, 64 well, is it, There's lengths? obviously a counter, isn't there? But Yeah, you're not, you're not keeping counts, are you? Or I, no. I, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd have to poke my head up every, like, 10 lengths. Like, how many lengths have I got left? Oh, what? How many? 48. <laughs> it seems like a long way to go. But maybe, they're, they're, obviously, these distance swimmers must have tactics. Let's say the 1500, you would do a, a 500 at a, a relatively easy pace and maybe build the, the second 500 and, you know, strong on the third. I don't know. It depends what their tactics are. But, yeah, the, the, the idea of turning 60-odd times, it, it makes me dizzy okay. thinking about it now. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me and Dan never went above 400? For me, 100. Yeah, you never went above four lengths. Four lengths, that's far. That's way too far. <laughs> that's enough. And even then, sometimes I counted wrong. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, let's touch upon the shorter distances then, Dan. Well, I'm going to start with the Loughborough guys. Andreas Vizeos, uh bucks records in the 100 and 200 fly. I mean, he was always going to win. He is, I think, the, the, the bigger name at this competition, I want to say. He mm. was the one... He was the, the man, I think. And then actually mm. going to the the breaststroke side of things, Greg Butler impressed me. 58 point for his 100 breaststroke. Converted to, to Olympic um, distance is probably about a 60 point. I think that's, that's good quite good going, actually. This time of year, that is really good going. So I think he's definitely one to watch out for to go a sub-minute later on uh, in the season. Um, any more for you? Any more guys that you want to talk about? Um, no Bucks record, but I was really impressed by the Sterling guys clean sweep in the 200 IM. I think led mm. by led by Evan Jones, who went at 156. Mm. And I, th- I think he won it by something like three seconds. That is a giant yeah. margin, no matter what competition you're in. Um, yeah. I know before the Commonwealth Games, I quietly said, you know, he does the same events as Duncan Scott. Let's, let's just keep a quiet <laughs> eye on him for Team Scotland. <laughs> There's a big future there. There is a massive future. He's come from the Millfield background, gone up to Sterling now. He's training with Duncan and Jack McMillan yeah, yeah. in the IM 200 free crew. That's a good squad to be in. That's a very good squad to yeah. be in for him. I do like the, the fact that you said quiet and we're on a, like a national podcast. Like it's not that quiet anymore. <laughs> so everyone now knows, oh, Evan Jones needs to watch him. He's next Duncan Scott, which he might be. I I, didn't... I, honestly, he's on the right track. So <laughs> he's, do, he's oh. doing really well and actually had a good meet. And yeah, again, another, another guy to watch out for in, in the future, I think. So Dan, on the women's side then, before we touch upon the, the dominant performances from the Loughborough girls, especially the ones that they've brought in this summer from America, um, yeah, Sterling again, Kiana McInnes. She had a yeah. very impressive Commonwealth Games for Scotland and raced well at Europeans and Rome. Um, so far, this season looks going well. A Bucks record in the 100 IM and stepping stones for the Olympic distance, the 50 metre programme later on in this season. Yeah, I mean, she's still a 200 meter flyer. I think everyone will agree with that. So that's really her her main event. I do see her as an Olympic distance athlete, more so than a short course athlete. Um, so I'm going to stick with Sterling. I was quite happy with Katie Shanahan's performances in both the IMs as well. They they were quite solid. I mean, I don't I don't know if these times are anything to scream and shout about. It's very early in the season. It's still short course season as well. But I think that they bode well for competitions later on with like let's say british champs and then worlds later on if they if those girls can qualify which i hopefully they can do um but um yeah i was quite impressed with some of the the racing some of the the the, the racing was quite close on the women's side especially in the the 200 meter freestyle and the 400 meter freestyle i mean some of the races were literally split by 0.3 over a 400 meter that i mean that they were neck and neck the whole way very interesting races well, I mean, the, the 200 freestyle was Freya Colbert and Paige Madden. That is top mm. quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's real actually, high I've, quality. Yeah, and Freya Colbert, uh, they, they were both tied for gold, actually, 155.8. Um, and Freya, Freya's another name we should probably mention. She was always in that top three, always meddling in her races, both in the freestyle and the IM. Um, but I think she's probably not guaranteed because no one's guaranteed a spot on the on the GB team but I think she's becoming more of a like a solid position for her on on the team because she's mm. consistent she's really consistent every time she's in the pool so it's 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 looking good for our, our female team right now on the GB side definitely yeah now of course the overall competitions were won both on the men's and women's side by Loughborough and the overall competition by Loughborough I would 
presume to everyone who's listening that isn't a massive surprise. I'm still slightly surprised that there isn't more of a competition from Sterling and mm. Bath in terms of taking it to them because this is a big competition in terms of sports funding for universities to get payouts yeah. from Bucks. Um, yeah. But no one seems to be able to get anywhere near the depth that Loughborough have. No, I suppose if you compare it to football, for example, it's very difficult to challenge the top six, mm. like in the Premier League. You know, it's really difficult to break into that top six. I know you see like Newcastle this season, they, they are, or have, it seems, they've broken in, but of course they've got that financial backing to get there, you know? So that's that's part of it. Um, I remember being head coach. Going? I don't know. I remember just being part of the, the university coaching team at Gloucestershire, and because we got so many bucks points, the, the sport of swimming actually got more funding ne the next okay. year. So if you're looking at, like let's, let's say, Birmingham, they will hopefully now get more funding because of their good performances this year. And so mm. that hopefully then goes on to bigger and better things. That's an example. But, but yeah. when Loughborough are bringing in swimmers like Felix Ubeck, well, Andres yeah. Vizeos, yeah. Paige Madden, Catherine Deloof, you've not yeah. really got too much of a chance to complete with the overall standings, do you? No, well, there's not too much to say about that. It's just the way it is, I suppose. They're, they're able to track the best swimmers because they are the best team. So let's talk a little bit inside the Loughborough University swimming team. And to do that, rather than me and Dan breaking down every individual swimmer, we are going to invite on a two-time Bucks champion and winner of two silver medals from this weekend just gone. And certainly a sprinter to look out for for the future, Alex Cahoon. Alex, thank you for joining us this week. How are you? Hi guys, thanks for having me on firstly. Yeah, I'm really good. After a good weekend of racing, a bit tired, but I'm ready to go again. All recovered? Does nice. it... Well, you, you had quite a busy programme with all of the relays, all of the 50s, 100s. Does it... Is it quite a tiring weekend for you in Sheffield? It It, it, it is, yeah, but... Towards... I got to Saturday night and I was sick of swimming 50s. I was like, <laughs> I, really? I, I want to swim 100 now. Like, It's all good being quick, but I was just like... Oh. I want, I want to do four lengths instead of two. So. I'm, I'm amazed yeah. that was that's even a thing. I thought sprinters just want to do fifties. That's that's the main I know, thing. I know it normally is, but I just sick of it. I was found so many, and it's, it's relays as well. Yeah, I'm just ready to. Wow. Are you are you trying to up the distance in your program? Are you trying to move away from the fifty and add the hundred into your repertoire? It's, it's not as if we're not like moving away from it, but like our main focus is the hundred. Okay. Fifty. Mm. It will come. Speed comes in training. Yeah, it's not specific. We have increased the mileage that we're doing each week, but it's not like a crazy jump. I'm not doing like fifty, sixty k. I'm just doing like four, low forty. So, yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Um, let's get, let's start by discussing a little bit about the Bucks experience. So, what is it like for those listening at home to race at Bucks? What makes it different to other swimming events in the country? I think. I think the atmosphere is definitely up there because obviously there's so many people there compared mm. to like we don't get as many for like nationals. Obviously, you get parents who like sometimes they watch their child and then go. You feel like bucks. They watch every single event and everyone's cheering. Like that guy from Leeds, the mm. atmosphere is unbelievable. Like, I've never seen Ponch Forge like that. And there's only a small group of them from Leeds and they made so much noise. <laughs> it, was, it was actually really good. So, fair play to them. Do you reckon a mix of both like elite swimmers and the sort of social swimmers helped to build like a cracking atmosphere there? Yeah, I, yeah. It's obviously, you've got the big names like Felix, Katie, mm. Deleuve, mm. uh, Andreas, who obviously wins everything. So, <laughs> yeah. So I have a mix of like the people that who, who like enjoy swimming, but obviously know they're not going to challenge people like Andreas. Mm. So like they they get their enjoyment out of it as well. Yeah, so it's almost yeah. like there's less pressure on the swimmers for the results and they actually cheer on just, just for enjoyment, essentially. Yeah, it creates exactly. a much more vibrant atmosphere at the pool. Yeah, yeah, so it's not all about winning, it's about like taking part as well. So. I think that's something that maybe clubs and open meets around the country could maybe look at a little bit more because yeah. the best atmospheres are your fun meets. They're your bucks. Yeah. They're your arena leagues. They're, those are the ones which really stand out for, to me from my time at swimming. Whereas open meets are, it's a long weekend open meets. Whereas bucks yeah. is a fun weekend. Yeah, yeah. it's like none of, all the top swimmers. We aren't tapered. It's it's like 
it is obviously it's important that we score points for uni, but like uh, if we don't swim great, it's not like us. Oh, the end, it's not the end of the world. Like mm. we can have a little bit of fun. It's like we can like experiment like race plans. Like I, mm. I two weeks ago in Berlin, I went out high twenty two and I came back in twenty six zero. I was absolutely knackered, and I said to Ian, "I'm not going out this fast this week. I'm going to try and get back a little, little bit faster," which I did. So it's just like working around like race plans and everything. Mm. That, that's uh, the benefit of doing it early season, I suppose, because that's what Bucks. This is what this sort of competition is for, just a sort of play around of tactics. I don't mind going out quite strong on a hundred. I actually would like you to do that. That'd be quite good because you know you put yourself in the best position to to win their event or get a good time. But it's it's good to play around, and I think that's what Bucks is really all about, especially for the top guys, anyway. Yeah, like there's there's no pressure really on us. Yeah. To, yeah. to obviously like hit the times we want to hit because we're never going to hit them in November obviously not going to hit them in November <laughs> it's more like, like oh, I totally forgot what I'm for in then <laughs> we want to be hitting it at Scottish Nationals that's when it really matters so, yeah yeah. I, I mean my next question was how important is a meet of like this for Loughborough University so when I say that I don't mean the swimmers I mean it would if you don't mind me saying, it'd be kind of embarrassing if a uh, university, the scale and size of Loughborough, didn't win overall competition. Is there a little yeah. bit of pressure going in that, come on, you have to win this, like the overall team competition? I just I feel like if you look around the team, there's so many big names. Mm. I just feel like there's no way we're losing this. So it doesn't, I don't feel any pressure personally. I don't know about the, I can't speak for the rest of the team, but. I think the uni, obviously the uni want us to do really well because we score so many points mm. swimming alone for universities. I think last year, Loughborough got 9,000 points overall and swimming scored 1,000 of them. Mm. And you think of how many other sports there are competing at, at like Bucks. We mm. do incredibly. So I guess there is a bit of pressure, but everyone has faith in the team to do well. Am I right I in thinking you... those Bucks points bring money into the, the uni? Yeah, they do. I, I don't know how it gets distributed. Uh, well, I, I presume but... if you're right at the top and you're winning these events, then you, you get some sort of funding back. So it's funding, maybe yeah. outwardly, like the coaches are getting pressure put on them to make sure you win. But I guess you swimmers, there's, there's yeah. never a doubt. It's hard for the coaches because they obviously don't want to taper us for mm. this meet because it's for it's... us swimmers, we don't really care. But for the uni, it's, it's massive because obviously we're bringing in big bucks so they want us to do well so obviously the, the coaches get a bit like oh you need to win here and obviously mm. we don't want to taper for this meet so just getting that right balance really mm. yeah i wonder if there's a bit more pressure from let's say the, the bigger swimming unis let's say sterling and bath who we've spoke about earlier in our in our review do they do they pile pressure onto you guys as well because they they obviously want to have the same outcome as you they should be winning or should be in the top two three as well yeah, you, you obviously look at the big names other unis have got and think, oh Christ, they're, they're looking looking strong this year. Yeah. But I, our team's just too good, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. copy, but it yeah. is too, you, we're just stacked in every single event and mm. I just feel like there's no need to worry, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go through a little bit of Loughborough's performances then. And one time that stood out to both me and Dan was your <laughs> split in the medley relay of a 19.19 now blistering ankle leg is a world record on the way is that is that what we can expect <laughs> yeah i think i think that time smashes the previous split world record by about a second so <laughs> has it been yeah. corrected yet <laughs> no i don't think it has not like officially but we have a we have a good idea what i went what was it that was, i think it's 21 one okay yeah, because I looked at the splits and Andreas went 24-6 and then individually yeah. he went 23 point. I'm like, well, he's gone like a second slower. Something's gone wrong here. But when I saw your yeah. time of 19-19, I thought, oh my God, he's on for a world record. That is world record pace. I'd love to have seen that race. Um, yeah. But clearly it's not right. <laughs> I was walking down for the presentation and Dave, Dave Bloomfield came up to me and goes, oh, have you seen your split? And I'm like, oh, is it, is it, have I gone 20 point or something like that? I guess you've got 19. I was like, screenshot it, screenshot it really quickly. <laughs> Before it's Before corrected. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't actually checked, so it might have been changed, but not that I know of. Now, I'm right in thinking <laughs> it was a new Bucks record, even if the timings yeah. were, the splits were a little a bit Bucks messed up. Um, you don't discuss targets like hitting records from years before? 
Yeah, we, we did actually. Oh, we, had okay. a, we have a meeting every year, and we, this year we had a look and we thought those records are very capable. So, how much goes into the, the build up of breaking that record? Takeovers constantly the week before? Well, I've just come off that British Swim and Relay camp, so I thought I've got to have a good takeover here, otherwise, mm. that camp would have been for nothing. But it's just. <laughs> We, we spoke as a team, me, Andreas, Connor and Greg, we said, don't be, don't do anything silly. We're, we're more capable of doing it without risking a mm. point, whatever ridiculous takeover. Mm. And he, he and our coach read out all the splits we need to go. And it was, it was quite comfortable to do in the end. So you don't practice like relay takeovers just for this sort of meet. Do you do it constantly throughout the year? Well, it's quite hard because obviously you have the national centre people as well, so mm. mixing and training is not always available. And obviously, I was in training last week because I was, I was a bit under the weather, so I didn't really get we didn't really get a chance to all all get together as a team to mm. uh, p- practice. Yeah. Now we yeah. said earlier on in the podcast before we invited you on our kind of standout swimmers, but as a Loughborough swimmer yourself, who were the names that stood out for you? as part of the squad give them a shout out oh the squad I think Greg Butler 58 point it's yeah that was good yeah that's good it's very quick and obviously Dan Riffin breaking all mm. sorts of records every time he gets in the water that, that man PB so big shout out yeah. to him yeah, he's that, on um, fire that guy he is really on fire, on fire. Yeah. Yeah. three weeks of altitude <laughs> yeah he, he trains unbelievably hard so he, he fully deserves everything you're getting right now so big shout yeah. out to him heard stories I have heard stories. Yeah, he's, he's an <laughs> um, So if we look at your individual performances yourself, how would you rate your weekend, especially considering you li- you said to us beforehand you had a virus the whole week before. So how would you rate yeah. your week weekend in Sheffield? Well, I started off Friday night with uh, the 4x50 relay heat, and I said to Ian, put me, put me on first, see what I can go from a dead start. Mm. And I went 22-0-0, I think, and I thought, oh, that's, that's great. That's set up brilliant for the individual tomorrow. Mm. But I just I just couldn't get under the 21 bar- uh, 22 barrier. So Is that a target? I was obviously a bit, yeah, going into it, I thought, oh, if I can go that, that puts a l- like less pressure for Scottish Nationals a few weeks later. Mm. Mm. Obviously, now I'm going a bit, I feel like I have to do it. <laughs> Getting twitchy. Scottish. Yeah, but I was really I was really pleased with my 100, actually, because I found the heat quite easy, and I was... I was a bit worried I didn't have much in me, like energy-wise, to do it, but I was really happy with my 100. Are you quite confident that you'll eventually go sub-22 for that 50? Yeah, I'm confident. Once I'm shaved down, it'll be yeah. fine. So do, you know, do, you know the sort of, do you know the ways to sort of get down there? Do you know exactly what you need to work on to, to get a 21 point? I know, I know long-term solutions. My starting turns aren't good enough, but it's whether I can fix that okay. in three weeks. Is, is the big question, yeah. but I feel like a bit more caffeine, a bit more adrenaline on the bigger stage, I feel like I could do it. <laughs> Simple <laughs> as that. Um, yeah. You've got the facilities at Loughborough to, to really work on that start with all of that camera technology. Is that something you're focusing on with Ian, your coach? Yeah, that, that's helped me massively because I came in obviously from Sirencester, got nothing mm. really. And then to go to yeah. Loughborough with all these cameras, it's unbelievable. And, on my time's dropping quite quickly at the moment, so it's, it's making a massive difference. Do you think that's why your time's dropping so much? Because you almost came to Loughborough as a very raw swimmer, essentially. You've, we're, we'll get into Sirencester a little bit, but it is a very small village club, essentially, yeah. compared to some swimmers who go off to these big national centres who have had the background of weights training, nutrition programmes. Mm. You... You went there quite raw. Is that why your time's coming down? Because you're now seeing the benefits of essentially having a year or two at the National Centre? Yeah, it's, it's helped me massively. Like, I remember the first time we did turns, my mm. turns were shocking. Like looking at it, like we compared them to Felix, mm. all sorts of names on the Kistler. And I was just thinking, how am I that bad? Like, it was a, it was a, like, did you know you were bad that, before that? Well, I know obviously, obviously wasn't where I am now. Like, okay. I'm not. I'm not, I expected like I wasn't going to be, mm. but to be that bad, I was like, oh, Christ! Like, I, I, but that was 
the changing point, I think, because I just knew what I had to work on. Mm. So I wasn't, yeah. hadn't swam like a 50 point of thinking, oh, I've swam the perfect race there. What, mm. what do I do? I had so many things I had to work on. So it's still, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Mm. So I still got loads to improve on, but I'm definitely making massive improvements. Yeah, it's interesting because I had the same sort of experience as well when I went to Cardiff. Um, the fact that I thought I was relatively good at pull and then I went to go to Cardiff and I found myself really, really struggling, like badly struggling. And I was like, like a length behind on a 400 pull or something like that. Really, really tough. So I, immediately I thought I had, to ch I had to change something, whether it's, I don't know, do more paddle work or do more stuff in the gym or pull up something to make a bit of a difference. But um, yeah, it's interesting that you've had that same experience. I, I yeah. think that the, the jump from a, let's say, a village club or a smaller sort of feeder club to that national centre level makes a huge difference. I know, because... Uh, sorry, sister, I think I got six, seven hours pool time a week. And that's if I went to every single session, obviously had A-levels, had yeah. a lockdown, mm -hmm. obviously I couldn't, I couldn't swim at all. And then to come to Loughborough, the first four weeks, God, I was, I didn't talk to anyone. I was so miserable. I was, tired or? I, yeah, tired. Like I couldn't, I could not yeah. get out of bed. I was napping like three or four hours a day. Luckily I didn't have lectures at the start and I was just, I was in the bin. Were you thrown in the deep end or were eased in? Or was it literally like, come on, this is National Centre, get on with it? Uh, I'd say I was eased in. They did know my background coming okay. in. Because I was going to be put into the, the AU squad. Because obviously, to build me in properly. Because mm -hmm. they're, not, they're, they're not stupid. They know I've come from this mm -hmm. background of six, seven hours a week. They can't just expect me to jump into a 16-hour programme. So I think I started off about... 12 hours for the first couple of weeks and then I went into full training but I soon got the gist of it and but then again going from 6 hours like you say up to 12 you're doubling it already that's yeah. and that's easing in so that's a lot from where you were you know that's it, it a was, big difference it was a hard point in my life not like that. <laughs> not that my parents would, like, they ring me and I was just like oh, I'm so tired <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the classic. Yeah. It's the classic case of the big fish in a little pond going from suddenly the big fish going into a massive pond where there's other big fish type thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, yes, I think it's only good. I was I was going to say one of the reasons why you must have improved, I think, is because we've got such a good sprinting um, boys guy. Uh, we've got a good sprinting setup at the moment on the on the men's side with, let's say, Matt Richards, Jacob Whittle, Duncan Scott. Um, the fact that you've got these guys to look up to, does that make you want to train harder and, and you know, eventually sort of compete with them and even beat them at some point? Yeah, definitely, because the, the times they're dropping at the moment, they're get, it's getting silly. So yeah. I am playing catch-up, but I believe I can I can get to that point. Like They haven't got anything that I haven't got, so hmm. there's no really, no excuses really. So it's just got to crack. Get You're very much really. still on that steep arc, steep upward arc. You don't see it slowing down right now. No, it's, well, I had like the whole of last year, I was PBing every time I got in the water because my times mm. were very fast. And I know I'm going to get to the point where I'm not going to PB. Mm. You know, it's how I deal with that because when I swim bad, I'm really not a good person to be around. Like, <laughs> I, 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 re I want to PB every time I get in the water, yeah. even if it's like at Bucks. Like, I, yeah. I, I want to PB. It's just, it's just who I am as, a, as an athlete. I'm very competitive. When you were at Sirencester and you only had six, seven, eight hours a week available to you and you could see that you were obviously doing well, you were going to nationals. Why did you never want to move to more pool time when you were younger? Why wait until you got to university? I think I think family. I am quite shy. Okay. And I don't I think I'd have struggled going to Millfield or like Mount Kelly at the age of sixteen. Mm. So I'm I'm really close to mum, dad, and my brother, and I'm a grandma and grandpa and uncle. So I think it was leaving them was I don't think I was ready. Okay. To like okay. I wasn't my I don't know how to word it. Like I didn't love swimming okay. at that moment in my life either. I just I I played rugby on the side and I really enjoyed that. Mm. And it was just balancing both. Like I didn't enjoy swimming very much until I started dropping better times and getting slightly better. It's interesting. I wonder if it's kind of going to help with your longevity in the sport because a lot of the people who go off to university programs will have had four or five years at 
quite a high level of training or long hours whereas you're now only just getting into it so you've you've almost got that i don't know i want to say youthful drive but you none of them are old at university but yeah. do, do you know what i mean you're you're still almost yeah. got that age group enthusiasm and that's not been knocked out of you yet it's it is like i'm a baby to be honest yeah like i'm so new to the sport i'm not i'm crawling i want to be running like but i know the pathway that I'm on is going to get me there. It's just, mm. it's just a matter of time because obviously, when I was 16, I wasn't on a massive program. Mm. I was just doing bits and bobs like gym, for example. Like I was doing it with my brother in a local gym like twice a week. Like I didn't have a program. I didn't have anything to follow. And I've come to Loughborough and I've got everything. It's just all gone mm. into me. And I feel like the like I feel like I needed a year yeah. at Loughborough with a senior program, the right people around me to get me on the right path. And I feel like year two I, I can really push on now mm. i think mm. it, it's definitely an interesting lesson for any parents who are listening who are trying to get their kids more pool time it's maybe not necessarily needed i think uh, the, yeah. the enjoyment and keeping you going because I, I, I had this debate with my brother he's, he's like you're doing well now why do you need 16 hours you're a sprinter why do you need so much mm. pool time and i didn't have an answer to him i said mm. i don't know i just Everyone does it, so it must it must work for them. And the question was, was oh, you're, you're this good now. Imagine mm. if you yeah. could do double that. And obviously, but that that it doesn't always work like that for everyone, does it? No, yeah, everyone's different because because we went to Turkey and like Ben Proud doesn't do that many meters, and obviously no. you can drop silly times. Mm. So everyone's mm. different. So if we go back then at your time at Siren, what was the main focus during those? six hours in the pool or six sessions in the pool it was hard really because it was just mainly aerobic because we didn't have time to suit up we didn't didn't really have time to get blocks out because that takes 15 20 minutes there because obviously public come in so they're not permanently always there mm. so it's just is we had like once a week was technique so it was yeah. just all how much meters we can do in a week with the pool time we've got yeah, because there's always a constant debate of whether it's quantity over quality, and I've always said that technique is the main focus, and it should be the main focus, especially like at a village club, because then, let's take you for example, you have your good technique, and then you go to a bigger program where they have more hours, then you can build up that's, that engine, I suppose, then the speed, and it naturally happens better, I suppose, but that that's the sort of thing that you did at Siren as well. Yeah, because obviously I've never seen myself swim underwater with a camera. And then I go to Loughborough and I've got it all. So yeah. I'm not I'm not doing the technique wrong at Siren. It's just mm. I'm not doing it right. Like the amount of improvements I've already made at Loughborough on my technique compared to if I was still at Siren is it's just been massive. Well, stuff awesome. you're not realising, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're also yeah. older. You're wiser. You can actually take it in. You're not a stubborn teenager who's just going to brush off right. advice and be like, what, "What? Why do I care? <laughs> I know best." Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Alex, what's the goals for the rest of the season? You've obviously said go sub twenty two at Scottish Nationals. What's the rest of the target come the Olympic distance season later on? Uh, obviously, short course. I like. I'd like to go forty seven point. Try and creep in there. But I said to you, my main focus is, is long course. I'm not great at short course. I, mm. I can accept that. I will, obviously. Would like to go 48 long this mm. year and try and challenge the other boys mm. a little bit and try and like get in those A finals instead of being like second, first in for the B finals. I want to be a, be in the mix of them. You, you said you were on that relay camp. Was there any communications with British swimming in terms of getting you up for a, a four by one sometime later on in the season? Yeah, we we all had like like target times to, that we all have to go like come Olympic year, mm. and we've all had like loads of motivational speakers come in and get us really pumped. And I think we've got such a good group of like lads in this four by one that we can we can win Olympic gold easily. I think if we all all get together and train hard, I believe we can. Yeah, it's interesting how you say it's all mostly time-based. Well, of course it is when you come to Olympics, because that's the time 
needs to be fast for you to win Olympic gold. But are there any processes that you're going to be concentrating on throughout this whole year? You say the starts and turns. Is there anything else? So, like my best attributes is my swim speed. No doubt about that. And even we went on as with Ian and Andy Wallace on the kiss and they're saying, "Oh, this is this is wrong. You've got to change this. Got to change that." And I just think if I can get that right and then get my turns and starts right, I I, I do think. I can put down a fast time, but I know it's going to take time and a lot of hard sessions. So, but I'm willing to do it. Is there well, a focus on the gym side of things as well? Yeah, I've started this year. I'm going to start lifting four times instead of three okay. compared to last year. So I'm going to try not like get bigger, but get stronger. Mm. Get more yeah. defined, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Alex, it's been a lot of fun having you on this podcast to briefly review bucks and then a really interesting conversation coming from. The, the the smaller club up to what is a giant centre at Loughborough. I've really enjoyed yeah. it. We do usually finish with some quick fire questions. Do they yeah. sound good to you? Yeah. Uh, so, what is your favourite event in swimming? Hundred freestyle. Who is your swimming idol? Caleb Dressel. What is your proudest moment in swimming? So far. I don't know, it's probably the worst one you've had on, but probably Bucks Champ long course last year. Uh, what's good. the hardest set you've ever done in training? Probably aerobic capacity on Monday night, holding holding like 60 points. Oh, kill me. It's like the classic 31s, is it? Yeah, yeah long course as well. Hard. Yeah, always horrible. Lovely. And final question, if you had to go on a road trip, there's three spaces in the car. You can take friends, family, celebrities, dead or alive, who would go See, with I, you? I knew this question was coming. I've been I've been asking everyone all week. Yeah. <laughs> what shall I answer? Uh, so I definitely have to take my brother. I'm very close to him. Bit of a controversial one. I'd, I'd say Piers Morgan. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I just Ooh. think he knows so much stuff. He knows everyone's life stories. And I just think he'd be... He'd be very good. And, oh. He would grill you though, wouldn't he? He would be in interview mode, like just grilling know, you all the time. I just feel like you know he would know so much. Mm. <laughs> it'd be good. Wow. And probably Cristiano Ronaldo because he's, he's oh, so you, you just want time. you just want a first hand seat to that Piers Morgan interview, yeah. essentially, <laughs> don't you? Well, I I defend Ronaldo with my whole life. I think he's the best <laughs> best ever. I love him to absolute bits. And then. Yeah. Piers Morgan, obviously, yeah. Nice. Alex, nice. thank you so much for coming on to the Propulsion Swimming podcast this week. Best of luck for the rest of the season, and we can't wait to essentially keep watching your times drop because, um, yeah. yeah, we invited you on thank for a reason. Much. We think there's a big future ahead. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, very best of luck for the rest of the season, and um, we'll catch up with you again soon. Yeah, thank you. So, Dan, great to welcome Alex on after what was a very busy weekend for him and the whole Loughborough squad at Bucks. Um, really interesting to hear. Essentially, it is an important meet without it being an important meet for Loughborough as a whole, but not for Loughborough swimmers. Um, and then the insight into essentially the jump from six, seven hours a week to a 16 hour program, full gym, full the works and how that's really mm. affected or well, actually it's it's not hindered his progress it's almost accelerated his progress at the elite stage that was my biggest takeaway and that was one thing i wanted to bring him on for was to ask him about that that jump because i've experienced that sort of that similar jump not as big as that he's gone mm. from six hours and then he said he was easing in to 12 hours well that's, <laughs> that's double. double that's du that's twice as hard and that's easing in so it's great to pick his brain about that journey that he went on the fact that yeah like you say six sessions of maybe a little bit of aerobic just try and get as much stuff in technique wise mm. um and the fact that he's able to now be one of the top sprinters in Loughborough and have that say that strong mentality that he's got that he thinks that he can compete with the best he's only 20 i mean mm. he's one to watch out for i think he is and if he can fix those starts and turns which he says is bad i mean he's on for, for something special isn't he yeah most definitely he's not quite at the level of your ben proud your lewis burras but they are pro guys they've been around the block for quite some yep. time now they are world-class swimmers but i feel like alex has a lot of untapped potential which is we're only just starting to see kind of the beginnings of it 
Um, for people who've listened to this podcast for a long time, we do like to invite these swimmers on who we think have a big future ahead of them, essentially before mm. they break onto the elite stage to showcase their abilities a little bit more. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're comparing him to Ben Proud and Lewis Burris now, I mean, those guys' backgrounds, I mean, you took a look at Lewis Burris, he was at Hamilton Aquatics in Dubai. Mm. That's a big old program. And you take yep. a look at Ben Proud and the Plymouth, that was a big old program. Yep, and then you exactly. look at Alex, we've just spoken to, Siren Sester, which I don't know, 50 swimmers max, maybe, in the whole club? Something like that. It's tiny. And so the fact that he's made the jump to Loughborough, he said he was knackered, but it's been now, what, one, two years, and he's now starting to mm. adapt. I think he's, he says he's prepared for the time when he's not going to PB. He will experience that. It's how he gets through that. And then um, his body will then need to adapt to the next load of training. He's now doing an extra gym session. So we'll see where he goes. Yes, a very exciting future for him indeed. Now, Dan, next week's podcast is going to be a special one. And all will be mm. revealed in a week's time. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And me and Dan will see you next week. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.